Video lesson 12.3, dot plots. So dot plots are just a graphical representation of a way for us to visually explain data and you know visualize what's going on and how it's being um, manipulated and distributed. So um, the, this picture over here is what a dot plot looks like, right? Um, and it's just basically a number line and we just plot the uh, data points on top of that to just give a visual representation um, of how that information is being um, distributed. So if we look at this first one here, uh, we can make a quick dot plot uh, in this first example by just simply taking here how many each person has. Uh, in this case, the number of brothers and sisters. So uh, this first person has two, so we just simply put a dot over the two. Uh, ben and Bernard has four, right? And we just keep going down the list um, Catherine's got two and we just want to make this clear uh, information and make sure your dots are clear and easy to read um, Fiona she's got two Arlen's got three Ian has two uh, Justin has one Paul Rihanna Stanley and Vincent once again, like I've said on all of these things when dealing with it, I would just double check. I would count how many pieces of data we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Let's just go back over here. That's 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we're good. And now we have our representation. All right. So there's always follow-up questions to these. Um, what is the most common number of brothers and sisters? We're just looking for which, which um, in this case, which one of these uh, numbers has the most uh, dots. So that's going to be two. How many uh, students have a total of three brothers or sisters? That's So we look in the column here with three. That's going to be three. How many students have more than two brothers? All right, so again, you got to make sure you, in this case, you got to be careful of the wording. It's just more than two. So two doesn't count. So I'm looking at three and four. So I combine those together. So it's going to be a total of five for that one. And how many students in total were there surveyed? We just did that by counting the total. That was 15 altogether. So again, once you create dot plots, uh, you just want to follow up with the information, whatever they give you. Not too, too bad, honestly. Um, so how symmetric um, and how this information is uh, visualized, it gives us some very important information and in how it's being distributed. So the first one is um, we refer to as symmetric or more commonly known as the uh, bell curve or bell shaped curve, right? And that's right here. See, it says bell shaped curve. So when we get this bell like shape, it's pretty uh, like symmetrical uh, for the information, then um, that's referred to as being symmetric or mirrored um, from there. Uh, that gives us a, one version of the representation. The other two are called skewed, all right? And you have skewed left and you have skewed right. So when you're skewed left, right, notice here, I'll do it in a different color here, right? All right, the lower values, uh, right, the low values here are on the left. All right, so the, as you can see the information, it doesn't have that nice bell-shaped curve. Uh, in, uh, in reality, if I look at it, it's got something like this, right? And over here, skewed to the right, right? The low values are on the right. And again, if I sketch that, it kind of looks something like that. Uh, information wise. So that's skewed left and skewed right. So the, between those three uh, versions, we can get a really good representation um, of how the how the data is just distributed. Um, so uh, two important things to know. If the information is symmetrical, then usually the most appropriate uh, way to represent that data would be the mean or the average. And if it's skewed data, then the best way to des uh, describe that typical value is going to be the median. All right. So that just is a, a good way. So if you can in understand what type of data and how it's being distributed, it kind of gives you a good representation as to which one of these two things to use. Right. Let's do one quick example so you have an understanding, and then I'll let you guys try some of these on your own for practice. 
All right, so again, let's make ourselves a dot plot. So I'm just gonna take all of these pieces of data and put it in. So uh, for here, we've got uh, what's happening for the given. This is specifically students from this high school uh, were asked how many pets do you currently own? So we're going in here. So we've got this, we've got four zeros. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten at one. So I'm going to put that right here in the middle. One, two, three, four. That was ten. Just to fit this in, I'm going to make this a little smaller, actually. So let me just make it a tiny bit smaller. I want to try and make it as evenly as possible here. Uh, two, one, two, three, four. We've got one, two for three. We've got one for four. We've got two for five. We've got two for six. One for seven. One for eight. One for nine. We've got one for 10 and one for 12. Nothing for 11. All right. So that would be our information. It was nice that the way they gave us the data was pretty um, organized there. So not too bad. Um, calculate the mean number of par uh, pets owned by the 30 students and then calculate the mean. So again, I'm just going to add up the total here. Uh, I could utilize the calculator and plug it into my uh, table. So I'll give you guys a second to try that. Let's see what you come up with. Feel free to pause the video and give that a shot. All right, welcome back. And hopefully you were able to say that the mean came to 3.2 and the median was two. And again, you could have done that by you know using the calculator, plugging into the list and doing the one variable statistics, or you could have done it by hand, uh, added up all of the uh, numbers, divided by the total number of numbers to find the mean, or, and then just go down the list, uh, knocking off the first and the last each time until you get to the middle uh, for the median. So, all right. Last but not least, uh, what is the typical number of pets for students uh, in this high school? Explain your choice. So basically we wanna say, what's a better answer? 3.2 or two? All right, so is it better to say that we have approximately three um, pets per student or two? All right, well, based on the data, right, we see that we have a skewed uh, set of data here. So if it's skewed, then we typically find that the median is a much better representation of the reality of the um, data. So in this case, we're going to say, since the data is skewed, and in this case, it's to the right because it's low, to the right, then a typical number of pets would best be shown using the median, which was two pets. And there you go. So again, it's a nice way to kind of sum up all of your work and be able to answer the question. And again, if this was just a, uh, the question at hand, I wouldn't necessarily have to find the mean um, if I can notice that right away that it's a skewed data and that I'm going to best be uh, given the results using the median. And the same thing is reversed. If it was a, you know, if you had that bell shaped curve and it was symmetric, then I could just simply find the mean and have that represent my uh, 
my best means of data for the for that case. So again, knowing the skewed and uh, symmetric uh, representation and what they mean helps you to be able to answer the questions uh, in sometimes a lot more, a lot faster way for or overall. All right, take the opportunity to uh, look over the video for anything that you may need uh, more clarification on. And don't forget to use the practice problems for uh, better understanding.